Hi, this is Roger Marsh for Family Talk. Do you remember Dr. Dobson's touching interview with Jessa Crisp? That kind of took me by surprise, and she was standing in front of the door. I couldn't leave, and I was trafficked during the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver, B.C. Or what about the powerful interview with Jensen Franklin? And I don't know who's listening to me today, but I just want to tell you that your children, I don't care how deep they're in addiction, I don't care how messed up it is, don't you ever stop praying. There were so many great Family Talk moments this year. It may be hard for you to pick your favorite program, but don't worry, we've done it for you. We have put together 18 of Dr. Dobson's most favorite broadcasts of the past year and present them to you together on six audio CDs in the 2018 Family Talk Best of Broadcast Collection. These entertaining and informative programs are sure to bless you and become a cherished part of your family resource library. This compelling CD set is our thank you for a suggested donation of $50 to support Family Talk. To join Dr. Dobson and Family Talk in serving families, call 877-732-6825 or visit drjamesdobson.org. Thank you for listening to this Family Talk broadcast. I'm excited you've joined us today as we bring you one of our best broadcasts from 2018. Throughout the month of December, we'll be highlighting our most listened to shows, along with some of Dr. Dobson's hand-picked favorites. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this popular program from this past year. Today on Family Talk. From time to time here on Family Talk, we find it necessary to tackle more serious topics facing the institution of the family. Now, on today's program, we're going to be talking about the crippling disease of Alzheimer's and how the children and spouses of those with dementia can find hope. You're listening to Family Talk with your host, successful author and world-renowned psychologist, Dr. James Dobson. I'm Roger Marsh, and with Dr. Dobson in the studio to discuss this tough subject is his longtime friend, Dr. Richard Furman. For the past 30 years, Dr. Furman has worked in the medical field and has dedicated his time and efforts to creating awareness of the various preventable issues that kill millions of Americans every year. Today, he'll be talking with Dr. Dobson about his new book, Defeating Dementia, and he'll lay out practical steps that people can take to lower their risk for developing Alzheimer's. Here now is the first part of their conversation on this edition of Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. Today we're going to talk about a very difficult subject that many families are dealing with today, and that is the debilitating diagnosis of Alzheimer's. We were talking in here in the studio just a few minutes ago and agreed that uh, from our perspective, this may be the cruelest disease of all. Did you know that according to the Alzheimer's Association, 5.7 million Americans are living with it, and projections are, listen to this now, the projections are that that number will rise to 14 million by the year 2050. And an even more sobering statistic is that half of all Americans who are now 85 or older are afflicted by this horrible disease. Half, half of the Americans, half of us, uh, who have reached that age. I haven't, but I know a lot of people who have and who are suffering with it. I said uh, this is one of the most cruel of all illnesses. Let me tell you why. It robs patients of their memories of childhood and courtship and parents and awareness of grandchildren and friends. It strips them of fellowship with God and a reflection on life. Every good thing is taken away, especially the marital relationship. Dating and the fun things and the humor and the vacations, everything you've experienced is gone. Only one party remembers them. It is devastating for victims and families alike. Those closest to those afflicted often suffer their own private hell. I don't use that word often. This comes close to it. And there is no cure for it. But there may be an avenue to prevention. And that's what we're going to talk about today. This is what makes this program so important. 
I said also before we went on the air that this may be one of the most important topics that we have dealt with in many years. It's relevant even to the young. It's relevant to everybody. But uh, even including the millennials who are sometimes accused of being self-absorbed, many of their grandparents are going through it. And some of their parents will walk this path. And I don't know how to tell you guys this, but you will be there soon yourself. Take it from me. Life passes awfully quickly, so it's relevant to you, too. In fact, you may be in the best position to prevent it, and we'll talk more about that. The book that we're going to be discussing today is a must-read by all of us. It's titled Defeating Dementia. It's written by my guest and wonderful friend, Dr. Richard Furman, a cardiologist and surgeon, been in practice for 30 years. He has been the uh, surgeon and the physician for Franklin Graham and Billy Graham before he died, and of course, uh, the Samaritan's Purse folks. I wish I could take the time to tell you all the things that he's done. Dick, welcome back to Family Talk. It's so good to have you here. Well, it's great to be here again, Dr. Dobson. Good to be here. We've discussed several of your books in previous programs, and I've appreciated them all. But this one is unique. Uh, do you feel that way about it? This think, one's kind of set aside. It's the most exciting one I've ever written, and I think the most informative, and the one that everybody ought to know about, Defeating Dementia. Did I overstate the case of what Alzheimer's is like? No. It's known to be the most dreaded disease in America. The people dread that more than cancer. I mean, just studies show that, that if you ask that question, it's terrible. And, and to watch your mother-in-law, Mrs. Dale, as I put in the book, to watch her go through 15 years of the progressive stages of Alzheimer's it, it's terrible. It's hard to believe. I mentioned also before we went on the air that uh, I have a very good friend, also a physician, uh, whose wife has been dying of Alzheimer's or experiencing it, and now she is dying. Eleven years they've gone through this. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, you know, followed it uh, closely. It's a tender spot that you just. I don't know how people deal with it. I really don't. Uh, you wrote about your mother-in-law in your book. Uh, I, I've got a paragraph from that book. Would you read it for us? It says, what drove you to write this book? Well, I watched my mother-in-law progress through the three stages of Alzheimer's. I watched her go from being an active, middle-aged lady to beginning to forget little things like her car keys and not remembering where she was driving to and calling someone on the phone and not remembering who she was calling when they answered. I saw her lose everyday independence the day I got her doctor to write a prescription which we placed on the refrigerator stating, no driving. Then came the walker, the wheelchair, and finally being bedridden and completely dependent on caregivers. So you watched this not only <clears throat> as a physician and as one taking care of patients medically, but inside your family. Right, and that's what, uh, that's what really got me, is to watch her go through these different stages of Alzheimer's. And I'm a, f a physician. I always thought it was the genes, uh, but I, I just wonder what's going on in her brain. Until recently, medical science thought it was primarily genetic, right? Right. The genes was a big, we thought was a big part of it. But to tell you the truth, and I started uh, reading and studying uh, the medical literature to see uh, what part uh, really does genes have to play with it. And uh, it was remarkable for me as a doctor to realize it's not nearly as significant as I thought. Only 5% of Alzheimer's is due to the Alzheimer's gene that guarantees you're going to have Alzheimer's if you have that gene. But there's another uh, gene, APOE4, which uh, 10 to 20% of Americans have, which 
makes you more prone to have Alzheimer's, but it doesn't mean you're going to have Alzheimer's, yeah. nor does it mean you're not going to have Alzheimer's unless you do, do something about it. The things that you have control over, three lifestyles that you well, can Well, that's be, kind of encouraging, isn't it's it? It's very I mean, encouraging. I, I was shocked. So each of us is on the hook for our own health, really, at that stage. That's right, and what that's exactly what I want the reader of this book to realize is that the road you're on determines your destination. But before you tell us that, give us the evidence for it. Uh, the Journal of the American Medical Association is one of the most prestigious right. journals in medicine. Right. Uh, around the world, really. You know, I published an article in it. It was one of my crowning achievements yeah, when yeah. I was at Children's Hospital. Um, they did a study of 1,800 patients over a period of 11, 14, 14, 14 years. years. Yeah. And what did they, I mean, this is hard research. It followed these people for 14 years, and they found that the ones who ate properly versus the ones who ate the bad food, and I wasn't real sure exactly what the bad food was or the good food was, the ones who ate the bad diet were 40% more likely to develop Alzheimer's. Well, that was shocking. That's pretty dramatic. What was even more dramatic was they had this group of people, and there was a group of them that exercised, and there was a group that didn't exercise. They saw the ones that didn't exercise versus the ones that exercised. The ones that exercised had a 48% less likelihood of developing Alzheimer's. Then there was a, another group that did both. They ate properly and exercised properly, and they had a 67% less likelihood. I hope everybody got that because you threw statistics uh, to people who some of them are driving cars on the way to work and <laughs> thinking about many things. Go back and think about that. If I walked up to you and you are aware of Alzheimer's or other uh, dementia uh, causes, and I said to you, uh, you know, without a great deal of effort, you can lower your risk 67 oh, yeah. percent just by doing these three things. Yeah. Man, alive. I think I could sell that. That only covered the food and the exercise. And I got to think about what about the third lifestyle, the weight? And, I, and this was what was shocking. If you are overweight, you've doubled your odds of getting Alzheimer's. If you're yeah. obese, you've tripled your chances of getting Alzheimer's. So I'm thinking, hey, this is something that everybody ought to know. Those three different lifestyles can change your future. These three lifestyles, they all zero in on the health of your arteries. And we can get into that a, a little later. But In that, fact, that's what your book is really about. It's right. about the health of the arteries. Well, you can't do a study of the literature about Alzheimer's that it doesn't come back to the health of your arteries. And I'd say at least a third of the articles written in the literature will talk about that the health of your heart is similar to the health of your brain. So that's the bottom line of it all. There's things we can be doing that protects the blood flow. You've got to have the nutrients going into the brain, the oxygen and the nutrients, but it also has to clear out the bad part, the, the debris of the brain. It's got to carry that off. That blood flow is the one most significant yeah. part of defeating yeah. Alzheimer's. We're going to talk about each of those three uh, because it's really important to understand what's going on. The title of this book is really magnificent, Defeating Dementia. Can you really make that statement? Can you really say to uh, America and the world, you probably don't have to go this route? Exactly. And that's what I was going to say a minute ago about you going down this road. Yeah. Everybody listening to us today, everybody that reads the book, they're being presented a fork in the road. They're going to decide they're going to continue on like they are or they're going to change. They're going to commit to a change. And that change... The, the book goes through all of the different steps of what we can be doing percentage-wise to 
defeat dementia. You know, 28 years ago, I was 54 years of age, and I was playing basketball. And I played three times a week, and I absolutely loved it. It was the most fun part of my week. And uh, I went up for a lay-in and shot the ball clear over the basket, and I knew something was drastically wrong. And I had chest pain, and I had a heart attack 28 years ago. That probably saved, well, it did. It threatened my life. I could have died right there. But it saved my life because I made some changes very quickly, and I kept them. One of them was exercise. This is my 24th year of exercising and almost every day. Um, the second is I changed my way of eating. And, I mean, it was radical. Um, I mean, you spend 10 days in a cardiac care unit not knowing if you're going to live. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets your attention. Right. And I lay there and I said, Lord, if you give me another chance, I won't mess it up. And a lot of people change their diets for a little bit, yeah. for a short time. It's so hard. The whole culture takes you in the other direction. Your family, all of the events. Uh, I just had a birthday, and there was stuff presented to me there <laughs> that I haven't eaten in a while. But then the third one was the hardest for me, and that's weight. I, you know, it just, uh, you would think exercising that amount would keep the weight out off. But mm -hmm. you still have got to exercise a lot of discipline, don't you? It's all intertwined, all the three. And didn't your father have my, a heart attack? Listen, my dad had four brothers. All five of them died of coronary artery disease. Okay. And my grandmother had a stroke. My grandfather had a heart attack. Uh, seven of them, yeah, and on the paternal side, died of heart attacks or strokes. And right. here I am. Healthy, seemingly. When, the first time you ever told me that, Dr. Dobson, it just ran through my mind, and I think I told you then, your exercise, and we'll get into cholesterol later, but your exercise increased your hero HDL cholesterol, which cleans out those arteries. That exercising that every day for those five years, that has saved your life. That's why you're sitting here today, mm -hmm. or it, you you wouldn't be here. But, but you made that commitment to exercise, and that's, there, there's so much to exercise that, that's so significant, not only with your heart, but with Alzheimer's. And if you think I about it— I had no idea that I was affecting my brain. Anytime you affect your heart, you're affecting your brain with, with more blood flow to your brain. But exercise, you think about it, it, does, it increases that HDL, just— flashing light there that exercise increases your good HDL which cleans out your arteries there's nothing there's no medicine there's not a pill you can take to increase your HDL exercise is the main thing also exercise increases the strength of your heart it's like lifting weights to get your biceps thicker that someone exercises their, their hearts much thicker that, that it's stronger so it's more efficient so what you did is not only did you clean out your arteries, but you increased the strength of your heart. There's no medicine that will increase the strength of your heart. And I get that across to people who don't exercise. There was a study where they, they uh, studied people who exercise the most and the least. The ones that exercise that were in the top 10%, Versus the ones who are in the bottom 10%, the bottom 10% were twice as likely to develop Alzheimer's. And they'd followed them along with these with That's pet scary. Scans. You know that? Well, just let that sink in. They followed it along, and there's the ones that didn't exercise, they had this beta amyloid building up in their brain. They could see it, a picture of it. Double the, the odds. Now, and I used to think, well, I see people walking around the track, and I'm thinking, they're not really exercising, but more and more you read these articles, even walking is considered great exercise with, with Alzheimer's. And the study that I like showed that if you can't walk one lap or a quarter uh, of a mile versus someone who walks 
two miles a day, and this was four to five days a week in this article, they were double the chance of getting Alzheimer's, the ones that, that didn't walk versus the ones that walked the, the two miles. So even walking is a great exercise in preventing, preventing Alzheimer's. And I kept wondering why. That doesn't put that much strain on the heart. How does that work? Realize it enhances the other lifestyles. It enhances, it convinces yourself, convinces your mind that if you exercise, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat differently. Uh, I'm going to lose some weight. It convinces, it, it enhances these other lifestyles that they're all intertwined. So even if you're just walking, that, uh, today I'd say the one most important takeaway from this program, get yourself a goal to exercise five to six days a week starting today, even if it's just walking. Uh, and it also affects other organs of the body, doesn't it? Oh, sure. Those same disciplines, if you will, uh, affect diabetes and cancer and any number of things. It's general health. Weight loss, you think of uh, colon cancer and you think of, of breast cancer. Th that's just the exercise is related to your weight. Your weight's related to especially those two cancers. So it does. It affects a lot more of your body than we have time to discuss today. As a matter of fact, our time is gone, but boy, we're not through talking about this. Uh, I want to talk about those three uh, disciplines uh, next time. Okay. Uh, you've flown out of here to be with us. From, you came a long way. So uh, we're going to just uh, continue talking right now, and then we'll let people hear tomorrow what we're saying today. Uh, but, okay. uh, Dick, I appreciate you so much. You've become a great friend to me. And, well, it's uh, mutual. We both love the same Lord. Don't yeah, we? <laughs> that's right. I'd forgotten you'd had that heart attack long ago, and it just dawned on me whenever you told me a few weeks ago about it. That that's you, what you, saved you your life. You said you've never seen anything quite like that. No, no, that 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 you had what three arteries blocked. Yeah, and uh, uh, the main artery, the LAD, yeah. the widowmaker, that's the widow was totally blocked. Yeah, and the left and right circumflex were also yeah. thirty and forty percent blocked. Yeah, and, well, that that uh, deciding to exercise. It's why you're here. I mean, the other things, too, but that's the one most significant factor you picked up on. And that's why I want to, want to get the readers to realize don't wait on something like that. Just read the book and let that be the inspiration. to. to and the it. book is Defeating Dementia, What You Can Do to Prevent Alzheimer's. You know, I, wouldn't you like to have a book that said what you can do to prevent cancer? Well, you can probably lower the risk, but it's out there, and people get a surprise with right. cancer. But here, you're making a definitive statement, what you can do to prevent Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. You know, that's a good news story, isn't it? It's great news. It, it was surprising to me as a physician, but it's, uh, it's something that I realized, hey, there are things we can be doing. And Dr. Furman, next time, of all the things that I want to cover in that period of time, and there's a lot, uh, I'm most interested in how you can detect Alzheimer's. There is a way to know that you've got work to do, and we'll tell people how next time. Yeah, okay. You have been listening to Family Talk with your host, psychologist and best-selling author, Dr. James Dobson. We've been featuring an enlightening conversation Dr. Dobson had with Dr. Richard Furman about ways to prevent, and in some instances, control Alzheimer's. When you visit our broadcast page at drjamesdobson.org, you can learn more about Dr. Furman's organization, The World Medical Mission. You can also get information on how to order a copy of his book, Defeating Dementia. That's drjamesdobson.org, and then hit the broadcast button. Be sure to join us again tomorrow to hear part two of Dr. Dobson's discussion with Dr. Richard Furman on the topic of defeating dementia. I'm Roger Marsh, wishing you a blessed day from all of us here at Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk.
This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute. You've been listening to Family Talk and one of our best of the best broadcasts from the year that was 2018. Now, before we close, I want to remind you of our matching grant that's going on right now. Here at the Dobson Family Institute, we rely on your generosity to continue fighting for families. And from now until the end of the year, every donation you make will be doubled. So $5 becomes 10, 25 becomes 50, 50 becomes 100, and so on. Now, this match is in place until we've reached our goal, so we urge you to take advantage of it right now. Learn how you can partner with us today by visiting drjamesdobson.org or by calling 877-732-6825. Thanks so much for listening today, and be sure to join us again next time for another 2018 Best of Broadcast. I'm Roger Marsh. Have a blessed day, everyone, from all of us here at Family Talk.